All right, so you should have finished uh, plotting all the points and connecting them together. And if you did it correctly, you should have something that looks like what you see on the screen here. Um, in my case, I've got cosine or the x values of the points on the circle plotted in blue. And I've got sine, which is the y values, plotted in red. Now, one thing we didn't talk about was the graph that is already on the paper, which is the tangent function. So the tangent function you see here is in black, and that's these curves here, okay? And we're going to look at tangent here in just a second. Um, but I want you to uh, really take a look at these graphs and understand the shapes. They're basically waves. In fact, um, waves and sound waves and mechanical waves and so forth um, follow these trig functions. And so these trig functions tend to be very uh, basic and very important functions uh, in analyzing the world around us. Let's scroll down to the bottom of the paper down here and uh, see how we can fill in the rest of this. If we were uh, to continue to plot more points by continuing many times around the circle, what do you think would happen? And the answer is that the graph would repeat every two pi radians, each of the graphs. So if we go back up here and look at this, we know that this uh, curve that we've created here represents one trip around the circle. Okay, so that's each of these points plotted, their y values are plotted. But we can go around the circle as many times as we want to. And as we do that, we will continue past 2 pi, and we will continue to uh, increase our angle past 2 pi and repeat this pattern over and over. And the same is going to be true for the x values for the uh, cosine graph. And so those graphs are both going to repeat every 2 pi radians. The other thing is that if you look at the graph of the sine function, sine of theta, it's exactly the same in shape as the cosine function, except it's shifted by pi over 2 radians. Now that may not be obvious at first because this looks like sort of a stretched out U and this looks kind of like a, uh, a wave starting and ending at zero. But if you imagine taking this point right here and shifting it pi over 2 to the right to here, you'll see those actually overlap. And we'll take a closer look at that in a moment. So using transformations, if we consider this horizontal shift of 2 pi radians, we can say that the sine function is the same thing as the cosine function shifted to the right by pi over 2 radians. And similarly, we can go the other direction and say that the cosine function is the same as the sine function shifted to the left by pi over 2. Now, let's talk about this tangent function here. It's not really clear from this, perhaps because the y scale is not large enough, but what we can see is that this tangent function tends to go higher and higher and higher, and we see these dotted lines here, which generally tell us that there's a vertical asymptote there. And indeed, that's what happens with the tangent function. So why is tangent so much different than sine and cosine? Sine and cosine are practically identical. Tangent looks really weird. And the reason for that is as follows. If we think about the tangent function as being opposite over adjacent, remember that when we make a hypotenuse of 1, we see that sine is the opposite side and cosine is just the adjacent side. It's the y value over the x value. And so we can see also that at certain values of the angle, theta, for example, right here, the cosine, which is the denominator of the tangent function, is 0. And we're dividing by 0. And that always generates a vertical asymptote. We have another case over here where that's true. And so if we take a look at this, we can see that whenever pi, uh, theta is pi over 2, or whenever theta is 3 pi over 2, we're basically dividing by 0, which is undefined. And that's what's going to create these vertical asymptotes. So at this point, for example, sine has a value of 1, cosine has a value of 0. 1 divided by 0 is undefined and gives us the vertical asymptote. Note here, for example, that sine and cosine have the same y value. 
Okay, so sine is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine is square root of 2 over 2. If I divide those, my answer is 1, which is the value of tangent at 45 degrees. Now I'd like to take a moment to see if we can connect then these points on the unit circle with the points on this graph. So this is something you already did um, by making the uh, uh, graphs on the assignment that you had, but let's see how this really works here. What I've done here is I've shut off cosine for now, and we're going to concentrate just on sine. Remember, sine is the y value, so everything you see in red will be related to sine. I'm going to start my angle right here at zero, and as I move the slider, my angle will move around the circle, increasing in value up till 2 pi. Over here, what I'm doing is plotting that y value along this axis. And so, as I start moving that circle around, you can see that the y value of that point on the circle becomes the y value of the sine function. We reach the very top here where sine is equal to 1. Sine is the y value. This is a unit circle. Its radius is 1. Now, sine begins to decrease. We get to pi radians, 180 degrees, and we reach 0. And now the y value goes negative till it reaches negative 1 and then comes back up. And so if I go ahead and just start this actually rotating on its own, hopefully you can see that connection. And notice that the um, point on the circle is going around and around pretty much forever. And on the right, where you see the, the sine wave, it's really tracing and then doubling back. But if you think about it, what's really going to happen is that this wave is going to continue. Okay, and so we can also uh, imagine that that wave would have come from the left as well. So we're really only looking at one cycle at a time. Okay, let's go ahead and stop here. And I'll reset back to an angle of zero. I'm going to shut off sine for now and turn on cosine. So again, this should look like your cosine graph on your paper. This time, I'm looking at the x value of this point. So this is going to be a little more difficult to follow. This height right here on the graph is the same as this length on the circle. Okay, so the x value becomes the y value over here. Once again, as I move around the circle, you can see that we start at an x value of 1. The x value decreases until I get to 90 degrees, pi over 2. And right here, the x value is 0. We're at the origin. If I continue, my x value goes to negative 1 and back. And we repeat the cycle over again. So if I put that into motion, you can see that a little bit more smoothly. Now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to turn on the sine function at the same time so you can see both of these hap uh, working at the same time. And so even though this looks a little bit busy, you can see the relationship between these two. The cosine function starts off before the sine function does, and this distance right here is going to be pi over 2, which is 90 degrees. And 90 degrees is what separates x and y. So there's a lot of different ways to look at the geometry of the sine and the cosine functions.